Hi friends, welcome to my channel and this is the second part of ECG. In this part, we are going to learn how the normal ECG is formed. Normal ECG is nothing but the normal electrical activity of the heart in one cardiac cycle, alright? To know that electrical activity of heart, one should know about the conducting system of heart, that is, the pathway through which the electrical impulses passes. Here I am going to have a very quick revision of it. But if you want to know each and every detail of conducting system, then I have done already a video on it. So I am placing its link in the description box below. So please, please, please click on the link and do watch it for a better understanding. Now let's start the quick revision of conducting system. Here we have SA node, also called a sino HL node. It is the place where the depolarization starts. From here, the depolarization spreads to two atria and from two atria, it spreads to ventricles from only AV node, which is the only connection between two atria and two ventricles. From here comes the bundle of his and from bundle of his, right and left branches, then these right and left branches gives Purkinje fibers. Let's talk about the velocities here. So, the velocity of the conducting system in SA node is moderate, in AV node is very very slow or almost delayed and in ventricles the velocity is high. Knowing the velocities of each component of conducting system is very much important in knowing the normal ECG. Now let's see how these electrical impulses or events are converted into vectors and how these vectors are converted into ECG patterns. As we all know that depolarization starts at SA node that is the gaining of positivity into the cells starts at SA node as it is the pacemaker and has ability to initiate the impulses. From here the depolarization spreads to two of the atria cell by cell downwards and outwards. If we add all these small small vectors we get a single vector which is directed downwards and leftwards. Next. We all know that the only connection between the atria and ventricle is AV node. So, those vectors which get into the AV node are only the ones which transfer the vectors down to the ventricles. Other vectors which do not get in connection with AV node are cancelled out. Now, here at the AV node, the velocity of depolarization is very, very, very slow. The reason behind this is to allow the atria to contract first and fill the ventricles. If the velocity is not slowed down here, then atria and ventricle contract at the same time and there will be no filling and no supply. Considering the very small size of AV node, when the waves of depolarization pass through it, no electrical activity can be recorded in ECG. That means there is some electrical activity in at AV node but it is not enough to get recorded in our ECG machine. Now coming to the depolarization in ventricles. The depolarization in ventricles takes place in three stages. First depolarization is done at septum, second at major part of ventricle and third at the base of a ventricle. First dealing with septal depolarization. As you see here from AV node we get a bundle of this which is divided into right and left bundle branch. But these branches are surrounded by fibrous tissue. This fibrous tissue acts as insulators. This is like a conducting electrical wire wrapped by rubber as insulator and not allowing the impulses of depolarization to reach the septum. The depolarization sets into the septum only from the left bundle branch as it has some connections. The right bundle branch is totally surrounded by the insulator acting fibrous tissue and only purpose is to carry the depolarization down. So, the vectors formed here are from left lower to right upper. Now adding all of them we get one vector which is smaller than atrial vector. Because the area or musculature is less here at the septum of ventricle than the atria. So, larger the musculature or area, the bigger vector is formed. Now, coming to the major portion of ventricle. This is how the vectors are formed. By adding all of them, we get a large vector directed to left bottom. 
Now coming to the base of a ventricle. The depolarization here is in the upward direction, here and here. As we have this small area at the base of the ventricles, the vectors are small. Now just for 5 seconds, look at all the vectors. The vectors of atria, the vector of septum, the vector of major portion and the vectors of a base of the ventricle. Up to now, we have seen how the electrical impulses are converted into vectors. Now quickly, we are going to see how these vectors are going to be converted into ECG patterns. So let's get started. We all know that our body is a good conductor of electricity. So, the electrical activity happening in the heart is passed all over the body and so we can record that electrical activity by placing one positive and one negative terminal on the body. So, first let's keep this heart in a human being and put a negative terminal at the arm and a positive terminal on the left foot because we need one positive and one negative terminal to record any electrical activity. So now, please be attentive here. Now we are going to do the main part that is we are going to form the normal ECG pattern. So we know that in depolarization, the positive ions come into the cell. Here we have a positive vector coming towards the positive terminal. So, when a positive vector is coming towards the positive terminal, we get a positive deflection. So, here we have the positive wave, P wave and as the velocity in both the atria is moderate, we get the P wave as a curve. Okay, now coming to the AV node. I have already told you that the depolarization takes place in AV node but it is very very small that it cannot be recorded in our ECG machine. So here we get a flat line which indicates no electrical activity. Next ventricular depolarization in that septum. So here at the septum the positive ions are going towards the negative terminal. So when positive are going towards the negative we get a negative deflection. So here we have a very small negative deflection that is Q wave. Then comes the major ventricular depolarization. Here we have a very big vector which is a positive vector moving towards the positive terminal. So when positive is moving towards the positive we get a positive deflection. And because the velocity in the ventricles is very speed or very high, so we get the deflection in the form of a sharp wave. It is called as R wave. Coming to the base, here we have two small positive vectors directed towards the negative terminal. So we sum up and get a small negative deflection in the form of S wave. So, this QRS represents the total ventricular depolarization. Depolarization means inlet of positive ions into the cells. At the end of depolarization, the ventricles are totally positive and there is no movement of electrons or no electrical activity. I said before that when there is no movement of electrons, no deflection is seen and here we get a flat line. Now it's time for repolarization that means the cell start gaining its negativity. Now it gains its negativity in the opposite direction that is from outwards to inwards and we get a negative vector which is directing towards the negative terminal. So when negative is directing towards the negative we get a positive deflection and here we have the positive T wave. So voila we got the normal ECG. In normal ECG pattern. The P wave denotes atrial depolarization, the QRS denotes the ventricular depolarization, the T wave denotes the ventricular repolarization. Did anyone of you get a doubt that where is the atrial repolarization wave? Did you? If you got it then you are really a brilliant and following me well. If not, it's okay.
So here I have the answer for the question why we don't see the atrial repolarization wave. So atrial repolarization event merges with the ventricular repolarization. To say it in the simple words, as the ventricles are very large than atrium, the ECG machine is busy in catching its wave and the atrial repolarization is not recorded. So that's it for today's video. Hope you got a detailed explanation of how a normal ECG is formed. Now relax, sit back and quickly revise the entire thing by replaying the video and you are done. If you like this video, please hit on that like button and in my next video that is ECG part 3, I am going to deal with the measurements of graphs, intervals, durations and etc etc. If you want to get updated for each or any of my upcoming videos, please do click on the subscribe button. And lastly, one more thing, please do leave your valuable comments and feedback below. Thank you. Bye-bye.